Hello everyone, today I'm just going to play some games and I'm just going to focus especially on tactics and on blunders. Because, you know, not that long time ago I created a free workbook that you can get with a lot of exercises. Uh, if you want to stop making blunders, you can get it if you visit stopmakingblunders.madbobula.com and what you can find in that workbook here you can see the table of contents and in the today's uh, stream I'm going to focus especially on those elements. So I'm going to focus on basic tactics, on tactical motives, on calculation and some other things that uh, are very useful uh, if, you are, if you are trying to stop making blunders during your games. Uh, okay, so let's, let's, let's start. Uh, okay, I will try to find the opponent for 10 minutes. Okay, here we go. And okay, I have got the first opponent from Singapore. Okay, so let's start. I play d4, opponent answers d5. Okay, I'm gonna play c4. So you can see that this is Queen's Gambit. Let's play maybe the Catalan. Yes, g3, this is the main position of the Catalan bishop b4. This is the variation that is, you can meet that line more often at the uh, higher level. The idea is that bishop goes to b4 and after bishop d2, bishop goes back to, to e7 and uh, my bishop at d2 is blocking knight from, uh, from b1. Uh, of course, I'm gonna play this. Ah, okay, a5. This is pretty unusual, so I'm just, I think, okay. I can continue my development, but I think that there are uh, some variations that black captures that pawn and it's not so easy to get it back. So maybe I will just play queen c2. Safe move that protects that pawn. Okay, bishop goes to g2. c2 is a default square for the queen in that variation, c5. Okay, so I have to admit that opponent is mixing up different uh, variations because bishop b4 is, is, is one, a5 is something else, and c5 it's like a tarash. Okay, usually when I see c5, the first move that comes into my mind is to capture, and this is most likely something I'm going to, to do. So if I capture here, opponent takes it back probably somehow, maybe I can get a free pawn. It cannot be correct for the opponent. Okay, let's just take it. <coughs> <coughs> okay, opponent captures at the d4. Okay, and now I have got a choice. I have to calculate. One option that I have to check is this one. Another option is here. And another option will be also bishop takes b4. Okay, in case knight captures here, knight will take it back. I think nothing really happens. I mean, you know, I take, take, knight takes, I castle. Okay, that's fine. Let's say it's more or less equal. In case I take it e6, bishop takes e6. Later I will take it pawn takes. I think this is slightly better for me because opponent has got a lot of pawn weaknesses. You can see that three pawns are very weak. Okay, but let's calculate also this one. Captured pawn captures. And now what? Uh, maybe just taking at e6. So you know what? I will start with this move. So opponent doesn't capture at the d2 with a check. And now... Ah, but if I capture here, bishop takes, in case I castle, a2 is under attack also. I didn't see that a2 is under attack. Mm, okay, you see, it's very important to, to, because you see, after one move, I can see definitely more. So, uh, so I have to double check, right? Is there, yes, and that, I'm afraid that that would be like a small blunder. Probably this is not a disaster, but I don't want to give my opponent that activity. So let me just capture that pawn back. Opponent will take it with the knight most likely, and I think I can just castle. And opponent has got also two weak pawns on the pre-file. Okay, opponent captures with the pawn. So I have there are like three pawns that are very weak. You can see that this is an isolated pawn, and if you are fighting against the isolated pawn, there are two most important principles: block it, and also uh, try to exchange minor pieces. Yeah, I think I would just develop my knight first. 
so I can always move my knight and protect this one. Okay, let's castle. Knight b3 or knight f3. I don't want to take because it will fix opponent's pawn structure. Let's go here. Knight is protecting this knight. I want to bring the rook. Okay, I also have to remember that this 10 minutes without the increment. Okay, you know what? Maybe just to avoid any problems on the e file, let's maybe play e3. So I don't need to bother with, with, with that. I can do something. I can move my queen away without thinking that I might lose that pawn. Okay, opponent goes there. I don't want to move my rook from the a file because it has to protect this one. But how can I create some threat to that pawn? Okay, knight f5. Does it make any sense? Such a maneuver? Or if I want to attack it, maybe a good idea would be to go knight e2 and later knight f4. I think that pawn cannot move forward anyway. Let's do that. Because now I just want to slowly bring more pressure over that pawn. Of course, I see that there is an extra. I have to move my queen. I don't want to go here because knight a5. I don't want to go to d2 because of knight e4. So maybe what? Maybe here. That's my plan. Okay, in case, of course, I'm calculating, I'm trying to use the opponent's time. In case opponent moves the knight, I will play here after bishop b5. I will, of course, double check it because this is a big commitment, but I'm pretty sure I can take at the d5. And my my queen is under attack, but I can capture also queen at the b6, and that should be high. Okay, knight a5, you know, I, I calculated at my opponent's time, so let's play knight f4. And after bishop b5, probably this is a good idea, so maybe opponent will defend it somehow with the bishop. And then what can I do? No, opponent wants to enter with the knight to this place. So maybe I can consider playing b3. Okay, bishop goes to e6. So opponent doesn't play bishop b5, of course. And now question. I mean, taking here probably it's not good because pawn captures that pawn is protected. Yeah, knight c4. This is what my opponent is trying to do. If I go b3, I allow him to play this move. But maybe this is not that scary. Okay, I will play b3. I would like to keep that knight out of the game. And after rook c3, I will just play queen d4. Okay, knight goes back. Probably opponent realizes that there is no future for that knight. So what, rook c... Yeah, now pawn is not under attack. I think I can bring my rook to the open file. It's also going to neutralize this rook. Later, maybe I can bring that knight. Okay, rook goes there. So what, can I bring it? Let's bring it here. Opponent captures, I'm very happy, but I would expect that opponent most likely will play something like knight e5, and maybe I can offer an exchange after queen b5. This is not the most tactical position. Maybe it's become more sharp, but... So, so far here you can see that there is more strategy, right? More like uh, how to play against the isolated pawn. Okay. Now, of course, I can take it, but probably opponent takes and opponent has got... There is a tactical motive. So you see even in most strategical positions, you can see that there are some... Uh, tactical elements, tactical motive, and opponent will make a discovered attack. One of the basic tactics, one of the seven basic tactics, so I don't want to do that. 
but I have to calculate because I have got some other ideas. Maybe I can take it. At the same time, I'm removing bishop that uh, in case my bishop is gone, I don't need to bother about light squares here. If I take it, pawn takes, I capture at e4, pawn captures, queen takes. And I have to say that that looks, I think, quite good. Or even better, I capture captures, I capture pawn captures, and then I take it and I exchange. I'm up a pawn, I exchange a lot of things. And this is the variation that I'm going to play. Because I'll be up a pawn, and when you're up, it's a good idea to exchange. Okay, the question is, can opponent do something here? Maybe opponent will try to make position more complicated. Okay, opponent doesn't. Okay, and now you see, if I capture here, still knights are on the, on the board. But I think I will start with this move. I think opponent is forced to take it back with a pawn. I can take it, pawn takes, queen takes, and I we go into the position when I'm up a pawn. Okay, knight cap, bishop captures. <coughs> okay, I will even set up a pre-move. Okay, what opponent is going to do? I don't have that much choice. I'm up a pawn, opponent has got an isolated pawn at the e6, backward pawn at the c6, so probably those are gonna be my targets. So the first move, if you see, because it's a good idea to identify opponent's weaknesses, and later, this is the most effective thing that you can do. You identify where are opponent's weaknesses, and later you are trying to put some pressure over this. Yeah, okay, what opponent is trying to do? Opponent is trying to get that pawn. Okay, so one variation that I definitely have to check is rook d6. After this move, I, if I take here, takes, takes, king goes somewhere. I, I cannot take capture at the c6. I mean, I can do that, but I lose this pawn. So I don't want to do that. But what happens in case here? Here, rook captures c6 first, and later, ah, okay, queen takes b3. So this is what opponent wants me to do. Okay, so again, another idea. Rook goes here, queen captures, queen captures c6, the rook is under attack. Also, by the way, there is a... Okay, because I'm calculating rook d6. There is such a principle that says that in positions with major pieces, go and attack opponent's king. So probably I can go there and bring my queen to this place. I have to go for the opponent's king. So attack on the on, on those pawns could be good, but I think this is even better. Now I think if opponent, because this is my threat, a rook's hanging checkmate is in the air. So opponent has to do something with that. So probably opponent will play play it here. And then I will just move my rook away. So I'm just keeping that rook on the seventh. Ah, okay, opponent ignores that. Ah, because opponent realizes that there is a, still a check. Queen a1 is a check. Okay, let's let's go. After check, king g2. But still, I think I can get some material, because even if rook will go, for example, to the f1, f8, I will just take it. No mate. Can I capture this one? The question is, can opponent attack my king? Because you see, I just told you that this is what, what, what you're supposed to do, but maybe opponent will attack my king and I have to pay more attention to that. Yes, because after this move, probably opponent will go here, pawn is in trouble. So I have to be extremely careful when it comes to that. Let's play here. I put some pressure over that rook. Okay, two minutes, 28 seconds. Yes, I don't want to give. I'm up a pawn, and I do not. I don't want to give my opponent any chance for the counterplay. Where that rook can go? In case rook escapes the eighth rank, I'm pretty sure I will go there. In case rook stays, let's say here, I mean I can always exchange rook, but my rook is more powerful, so I don't want to do that. Pro okay, I will think I will just go here. 
everything goes back. So now check maybe. I don't believe in rook g6. I will just play rook d6. Put the pressure on the pinned piece. And after g6, I'm pretty sure I have got this move. Okay, so now I will put some pressure over the pinned piece. Okay, so you see, another basic tactics, seven basic tactics. I recommend my YouTube video about it. And the pin is one of them, one of the most popular seven tactics in chess. Okay, opponent wants to play rematch. Okay, let's let's play one rematch. So you see, even if it was more strategical game, still uh, opponent, mm, still tactics was present there, right? So, okay, uh, okay, in this position, knight um, f3 is not a very common move, but probably it's gonna transpose into the uh, into the exchange variation of the French. And now, okay, there is one way of playing that you play knight c6, bishop d6, and and uh, you you castle queenside. This is a very sharp approach. I also have got, by the way, a YouTube video about it, about that how creative way, I think it's called creative way of playing against the exchange French. But no, I'm, not, I'm just going to use maybe knight f6. I'm just going to use something more rock solid. Okay, so I castle. Okay, h3. And now you can see that black has got a problem to develop the, the light square bishop because g4 is not available, f5 is not available. So in this position, it's a good idea to attack in the center a little bit. So black plays c5. Okay, c3. I know that some people, they do not mind to play c4, but let's just develop d knight first. Okay. Now I can take it and opponent will also get the isolated pawn, but it will also help my opponent to, to, to develop knight to c3. So maybe I will play something else that is useful. Mm -hmm. Maybe rook e8. It's a good idea to bring a piece into the open file. Uh, okay, bishop f4. So I can always go c4 and later b5 and I think I'm fine. Uh, or, you know what, can I play bishop e6, protecting that pawn, but then knight g5, which is a little bit annoying. I can always play b6 and bishop b7 here. This is, looks more like a tarta cover or something like this. If I capture, I still want to wait until opponent develops that knight so I can capture the d4. Yeah, after bishop f4, by the way, a very common idea is also here. Maybe I can go there. It attacks here and here. Is it a good idea for me or, or, or should I wait? Uh, okay, let's have a try. My rook at e8 is not hanging because it's protected by the knight. By the way, of course, I see that despite of the fact that I'm attacking that pawn three times, I'm attacking it with a c pawn one two three three pieces i cannot take it because in the end of that variation queen captures d4 though is bishop h7 would be bishop captures h7 which is a discovered uh, attack uh, yeah mm. okay queen goes queen goes to uh, b3 what can i do i mean i can always take it we can go into the end game um but okay mm. what can i do here i can go into the end game but okay i can also play c4 it forces opponent to capture i capture with the pawn and i have got the open file so maybe maybe this is something i can do it will give me the open file okay let's do that Okay, what opponent is going to play? Opponent goes there, okay. Uh, okay, I have to... Okay, a very common idea, because such a position happens also in the Slav defense, just reverse colors, 
and the basic idea is to push that pawn forward. So let's do that. After a3, I can play b4 because you can see that that pawn here is pinned. So yeah, I can I can play before I can exchange double pawns, um, but also but also you can see that I get some kind of attack on the queen side. Okay, let's push it forward. Okay, pawn goes to the b4 square. Opponent is trying to get some counterplay, as you can see. Uh, okay, what can I do? If I capture, pawn captures. My knight is in trouble, so I don't want to do that. I don't want to capture. I can take it here. Maybe this is a nice idea. Take a look. I will pawn takes back, and I will try to enter with my bishop and try to attack the opponent there. But I have to also solve the problem of my bishop. So maybe I can develop my bishop first. In case opponent captures, I capture back with the pawn. It's not nothing wrong with this. Now opponent wants to also go there. So let's start with the h6. So this is prophylaxis. I'm trying to stop knight g5. And later, okay, opponent plays h4. I don't really understand what's the purpose. I mean, probably opponent is afraid of g5, g4, but I, I, I would never play th this way anyway. So now what can I do? If I capture, pawn captures, bishop enters to the a3 with that threat. I have to admit that it looks very tempting. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there any other alternative plan for me? I can try to keep the tension, but... Okay, I have got an alternative plan to go b5. Of course, I see knights hanging, so I have to solve, it, solve the problem first. Uh, okay, but what else? What else? You see, I have got the half open file. So maybe, you know, this is one idea. One candidate move B capture C3. But maybe I can also bring the rook. I can bring another rook here and put more pressure over that pawn at the A2. And I think that that actually might be even better. I think it creates more problems. One of my coaches, he used to say that chess is about creating problems to your opponent. Yeah, so, so let's create that serious problem. I got the half open file, so let's, let's do that. In case opponent captures at, at, at the b4, knight captures. And my knight at b4 is also very strong. Opponent cannot play a3 because I have got those pieces. Maybe opponent has to capture. I take pawn captures, bishop captures. But that position also doesn't look bad. b3. So you can see that position becomes very dynamic. Okay, let's calculate what happens if I capture free pawn. Pawn captures, pawn captures. Is there any problem for me or is it just a free pawn? I do not see any reasons why I cannot take it. I think b3 opponent panicked a little bit. Now also you can see the d4 pawn is also quite weak. My knight's attacking that. It's protected at the moment, but opponent cannot forget about it. And still... The idea of bringing, okay, opponent captures, idea of bringing another rook still is on. 
Okay, if I capture, I see that potentially there is a d5 and fork, but I don't think that it does work. It's a, it's only a tactical motive, so I have to. You have to monitor tactical motives if you want if you do not want to miss any tactics for you or for your opponent. But uh, so I am aware that there is such a such a thing here, but I do not see any direct way how opponent can do that. Okay, and now one thing: if I capture with the rook there is a skewer and other basic tactics so i don't have that much choice i have to capture back with the pawn and also again probably rook goes to a8 maybe knight goes to d5 attacking protecting Okay, opponent wants to put some pressure over that pawn. Yeah, let's uh, see it's not hanging. I think I can just bring that rook here. Put some pressure. I would expect something like a4. Okay, and now take a look. I mean, I can go there and I can remove that piece. That piece is the defender, so it would be kind of like a removing of the defender. So let's let's try to do that. Okay, at the same time, you can see pawn at h4 is unprotected. It's also under attack. So by the way, uh, my idea was to go and uh, and remove remove the defender from the from the C2, but you can see that uh, pawn at h4 that is not protected here. So this is also discovered attack. So so two out of seven basic tactics, most popular basic tactics in chess. Yeah, I have got I have got I have got nice pawns, triple pawns. Ah, okay, opponent captures here, but if I'm not wrong, it's not that good because I think I can take a free bishop. I have to double check it, but I think bishop is free. Maybe opponent missed that thing. Yeah, my pawn chain is really nice. I know that if uh okay, opponent goes back. Let me just go back a little bit. In case that pawn would be here, so there are like a triple pawns. It's called also the, the tram, from what I know. So yeah, but okay, opponent lost a piece at the moment. Okay, so what can I do? I don't want to take it because there is potentially g3. I don't want to, I don't need any troubles. Let's maybe go back to my original plan. Let's try to remove the defender. But this time I'm up a piece, as you can see. Knight b4. My c3 pawn also can be very dangerous. <coughs> so what? Should I follow the plan? Probably bishop d1, c2, captors. Okay, bishop e4 wants to attack it. I can offer an exchange. I'm up. It's a good idea to exchange. Point captures, I will probably take it back with the knight, protecting that c3 pawn. Yeah, okay. Pawn, because I can capture with the pawn, rook captures, I take here. But, you know, I think that c3 pawn, if I have got a chance, it's better to keep it. Especially that now I would like to get this pawn, but I have to deal with that knight first. Because knight is attacking c6. So I can, okay, rook goes there, opponent is, is, is leaving the a4 pawn. And now I can play f6, but there are like some possibilities like this. I can capture that pawn at dh4. And I can go back maybe. Okay, let's just capture that pawn. Later maybe I can bring that bishop, remove the knight. And pawn at dh4 is mine. Okay, knight goes back, but I think it's it's pretty obvious that I want to take it. Okay, now I can capture another another pawn, or should I protect the c6 pawn? You know what? I can if I capture, I can always capture that pawn. I think. Let's play here. Let's offer an exchange. 
there is no background checkmate because I have got a safe place at h7. Okay, opponent really wants to get that pawn. Should I take it or, or not? Or maybe I should focus on my pawn at the c3 that is very powerful. And I think it's not going to be easy for the opponent to stop that pawn from, from promoting. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's try to find the next opponent. Uh, okay. This time opponent from Malaysia. So we are staying at the same region of world. Okay. Let's let 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 play white. This is Queen's Gambit. So this is another. Okay. I wanted to say that this is another Catalan, but in case opponent plays c6, uh, it looks like a Slav. Although in case opponent will go f5, it can also transpose into the. Uh, it can also transpose into the uh, stone wall. So this is might be actually the Dutch as well. But in this position, I mean, I can play e3, but 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 sometimes I play e3, but I will follow uh, my advice from the rock solid opening repertoire that you can always get uh, if you visit rocksolid.matbobula.com. Uh, just you, you can just get it for free. For black and white complete opening repertoire uh, but okay knight f6 so this is gonna be the slav okay but queen c2 okay now i can play this move queen c2 the idea is to protect pawn at the c4 that's the purpose so now i just want to go bishop g2 i would like to castle okay now opponent can play here either bishop d6 those are like a two different ideas here b5 i have seen such a move before although i have to admit i'm not that scared of them i can just play b3 protecting that pawn i will just take it okay rook goes into the open file but i think i can just castle i can just follow principles i see my pawn at the c4 is under pressure uh one day I can play queen a4, but I think I have to take care of that pawn. So let's start with standard knight d2. Okay, opponent is trying to remove the defender, but I have got another knight that I can bring. So I think it's not that scary. So what, queen a4, maybe the idea that I mentioned, because I put a lot of pressure here. Uh, is there any other alternative move for me? I can play play it here. I mean, taking here I see e2, unprotected pawn, so I have to be careful. There is also typical idea knight e5, but I think it leads uh, doesn't give me that much, especially knights protecting this one. So what should I do? Queen a4 or not? Yeah, let's maybe stick with my first idea. And how opponent is going to react. Hanging, hanging. Maybe opponent will play here. Yeah, maybe this is the idea queen a5. And I think I cannot really capture at the c6 because after rook c8, my queen might be trapped. So probably this is not gonna work. So, okay. So this is not gonna work. From what I calculated, uh, maybe I have to take it. I do not have that much choice, maybe. But if I take it, bishop takes. Yeah, let's let just take it. I think this is safe. And now I also see that this is like a pot might be a potential problem. So let's just develop that bishop. And you can see I'm also stopping opponent from, from the castle. I see that c4 pawn is hanging. Opponent can capture here. Then, then what? And then opponent has got a potential threat of playing c3 and my e2 pawn that was unprotected that I told you about might be in trouble. Ah, okay, opponent doesn't do that. Okay, I cannot trap that bishop. Okay, I definitely have to solve the problem of that pawn because now it's attacked three times. So what can I do? I can play c5, but that move is going to block my bishop. I don't want to do that. 
if I go here, opponent will also probably get it. Knight e5 doesn't work, knight's hanging too. I can eliminate everything and it looks like that I have to play uh, c takes d5. Okay, pawn captures. Uh, how to continue? e2 is hanging, but I have got the idea. I have got also an idea. Would be really nice to bring my rook here into the open file. And in case opponent captures, I can enter to the seventh rank. But then there is like a potential is something like this and I play rook e7. I have to admit that looks very tempting to get, you know, rook on the seventh rank is always very powerful. Let's, let's try to do that. Let's try to attack the opponent's king without the... Okay, knight goes to c4, opponent is afraid a little bit of that. I'm not surprised. Okay, I will just take it. And now I have got two ideas. One idea, I can bring this knight, but now if opponent captures, c7 is not available anymore for me. And another idea, I can play e3 and bishop f1, I'm also removing that bishop. Yeah, let's just keep it simple. You can see how annoying that bishop is. Opponent cannot bring that rook into the game. Probably opponent is playing is planning to do something like this. So what, bishop f1, bishop takes f1, king f1, opponent goes f6, and now I have got the time to enter with my rook somehow. Yeah, definitely I have to remove that piece from that square. After knight b6, I have got knight e5. I want to capture with a king from two reasons. First of all, this is the end game, so I would like to keep my king closer to the center. And second reason is that uh, I want to keep my rook into the open file. Okay, knight e5. Okay. Opponent goes there. Okay. If I capture, what opponent capture? Okay, what happens if I capture with everything? Or I can start, should I start with the bishop or with the knight? Okay, let's calculate. Only calculation can give me the answer. Let's assume captures, captures, pawn captures. Yeah, I don't want to exchange maybe also everything and maybe I can enter with that rook here. I don't want to exchange everything because it's going to lead into the... Um, lead into the end game and opponent's king will, can go to d7 or something. So maybe this is not something, not the best for, thing for me to do. But what else? Okay, I have got an, another idea. Bishop c5, trying to remove the defender. And also it's removing that defender. So if I go there, probably opponent will take it. I capture here. Opponent goes f6. I capture. Rook captures. Rook captures. Here, rook c8. Bishop c5 creates a lot of problems to the opponent. And what black is going to do? Okay, bishop takes f1, as expected. And now I told you this move. I can also capture here. But should I take it here? Okay, let's calculate. If I capture, rook captures, because rook's hanging, rook captures, bishop captures, rook c8. Ah, opponent has got bishop d8. I capture, king captures, knight f7. No, but my knight is not going out. Let, let's just keep it simple. Let's Let's capture that with a king. I don't want to overcomplicate the position, especially that uh, I think that I'm better here. I'm pretty sure that, that, that my pieces are more active and also that king is in trouble. Take a look, that king is so restricted, it has got no good place to go. <laughs> what opponent can do. Now I, I'm pretty sure I've, I've tried to capture at the b6. So 
So if it's my turn, or even if opponent goes f6, takes, 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 bishop takes, rook c8. Okay, bishop goes to d2, trying to attack my rook. So if I go there, probably opponent prepared this move. Yes, is it, is it, and if I capture rook at c2, it's hanging. So opponent is trying to use the pin. So what are my options here? After this move here, I can bring another rook and we will just exchange. It's not bad, I'm still slightly better, but I will try to find something else. If I go here, opponent goes to this place, so I play rook c1, so opponent most likely will go back, and then maybe I can bring another rook to c1, and basically we got into the same position. I like it even more. I can also play it here, and what opponent will do. No, I don't want to go here, because it, it creates a problem with my rook. Rook has got no, no room, so... So let's just play it here, and I'm pretty sure opponent will go back and I will play here, and we will get a very similar position. Just my, instead of having rooks here, my rooks are like this. But the variation that I'm hoping for here, captures, 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 rook c8, bishop d8, rook takes, king takes, knight f7, fork, knight captures h8, and uh, this is this is win for me. Pawn end game is win for me because I will just bring my king and capture probably a pawn, create the pass pawn and win the game. <laughs> I know that this is like a pretty long variation, but I think it 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 works. Of course, in case opponent plays f6. What else opponent can do? Bishop d2 is now not possible because my rook controls that square. Knight a4, I think I can just take it. Rook captures, rook captures. Okay, f6. <laughs> and I think I can just follow literally the variation that I told you about. So skewer, I will take it. <laughs> I will go here. I will take it. Okay, and now I told you that I will bring my king and I should be faster. Okay, let me double calculate it. Here, here. Because my knight is trapped, I cannot escape anywhere. But now my king is king goes back to g8. I go there, f7. I go here, e7. I go there. Now I think I'm faster. Of course, I have to pay attention to my opponent. Uh, okay, now I have to, I can go there. But I do not see. I mean, take a look. Take a look. This is, I think, important. Uh, I can go there, but then it gives my opponent. Still, should be win for me, but opponent can block me. So maybe I will use that idea that is called shouldering. And let's play here. I'm blocking that king from coming, and I want to bring my pawn closer. Of course, okay. Opponent probably will try to create the pass pawn on the king side, but I think I do not see, it's not easy for him to create the pass pawn, uh, you know, if it's five against five. Okay, and now let's just take it. I can capture that. Okay, and now the best, I have got the pass pawn, this is like a very, of course I cannot take it because it will create the pass pawn, now the best thing that I can do is to block the block pawns on the king side. <coughs> okay, I see that this is probably winning, but I think there is no rush. I can just wait and I can push away my opponent's king a little bit. Opponent will go f5. Okay, and opponent resigned. Yes, so you can see that. Uh, yeah, I think it was it was pretty interesting end game, and I'm very happy that. Uh, I was able to play the variation that I calculated. Okay, so this is another game. This is French defense, as you can see. Uh, okay, let's play c5. So this is Taraj variation. Taraj variation with the c5. I usually, against knight f3, I usually play it here. Okay, so we transpose a little bit. There is knight d7, but there is also, I think, an interesting move knight d4. <coughs> P4. 
on goes to c3, okay? And now I think I can play knight c6. I'm putting more pressure over pawn at the, at the d4. Just knight e4, it's just like a more active approach. So what, queen b6 takes, pawn takes, and I try to do the same to, to my opponent as before. Or should I capture the d2? Because if I go here, captures, pawn captures, pawn takes knight g5. <coughs> yeah, you know what? Maybe I will take it here first. <coughs> Yeah, I don't want to... Okay, and now queen goes to b6. You can see I have got a very strong pressure here. Opponent captures... I really will take it with the pawn. I'm pretty sure opponent will castle right now. Opponent doesn't want to play again. No. <laughs> opponent goes there. Okay. Let's use the same idea in the second game against that opponent. Okay, so <laughs> okay, so opponent. I thought that opponent will do anything he can just to stop that thing. Of course, I don't want to play C4. Very similar position, by the way. I think I can just take it. I can undouble my pawns. Yeah, I don't know what that king can do. Of course, opponent can castle here, but I don't think that this is great. Uh, what else opponent? Opponent can play f4, king f2. I see that there is a potential problem here. So let's play c5. Okay. This is also the answer that opponent can do. But now I have got the important... Think. Can I play d4? Because in case pawn captures, I capture. Of course, in case opponent doesn't capture, you can see that there is a fork. <coughs> and this is good for me. In case here, captures, pawn captures. Um, in case knight captures, I have got bishop b4 move. And that king is really in trouble, I believe. I think it is. In case captures, pawn captures, captures captures bishop here, bishop goes to b4, opponent plays bishop c3. Maybe this is what opponent is trying to do. Uh, I castle... Yeah, I'm down a pawn, I have got uh, some compensation, but maybe this is not enough. Okay, maybe, maybe just this is not enough. Okay, so what can I do? Maybe I can prepare this move. Or simply... <clears throat> okay, opponent goes b4. I didn't expect this, but now, can't I play here? Can't I use the same idea? Okay, and now I have to double calculate, but if I capture with the pawn, isn't that very similar position, just much better version for me, because now I can capture at the b4, and I'm not down on the material, but... I'm not down on the material because I can take that pawn back. Okay, and now take a look. I can, I can do whatever I want. I can take here, takes, and I can capture here. I think I'm winning material. Okay, I have to double. Ch okay, one thing. This is an option for me. Also looks good, but, but if I can just remove the defender, okay, queen captures. I'm winning immediately. In case I capture king captures, I take it here. I see opponent can enter, but I go back with a queen. A removing of the defender. One of the basic tactics in chess. Okay, now of course I will just take it. I'm up a piece and a pawn. Okay, I'm not surprised that opponent resigns. Okay, let's play let's play another game. Okay. Okay. You can see opponent from Greenland. So you do not play very often against players from Greenland. Okay. Uh, opponent plays the Tarash. 
defense. This is also the opening that I play if I if I play black. Uh, what can I do right now? I mean, I always capture. And I usually play the plan with g3, which is called the Rubinstein plan against the Tarash. Okay, knight c3. Okay, now at this position, I usually play bishop g5. There is also an alternative plan with d takes c5. Uh, some people, they play also b3, but I don't think that b3 is a, is a great move right now. Th there are some traps and black needs to be accurate, but I think that my opponent 20, over 2400 will know them. So maybe I don't want to play this. After bishop g5, there is like a very annoying uh, move c4. There is, by the way, a very good book of the, on the Tarash defense. Uh, it's written by uh, Agard and Ntrilis. And they recommend to play c4, and it gives black a really good counterplay. I have to. This is like a modern approach to the to the Tarash. So so maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe let's just take it. Usually bishop takes, and now maybe not bishop g5, but maybe I will just play simply a3. By the way, this is something that I recommend in my rock solid opening repertoire. This is the variation. This is like a very simple line. The idea is to go b4. You want to go b4 and then bishop has to decide. Okay, opponent plays h6. I think I can just play it here. Bishop has to do something. Okay. And now if I'm not wrong, okay, I can... I'm not going to develop my bishop to g5 anymore, but that's b2 is available for me. The question is, maybe I will, oh yes, I will start with knight a4. I want to get rid of that, I want to remove that bishop, because that bishop is very annoying. It's pointing towards my king, and also, very common idea in the Tarash is that black is pushing that pawn forward. So, I don't want to do that. I don't want my opponent to do that. Okay, bishop goes to c7. Now that bishop is pointing towards very strong pawn. I have got c5 square that is available for my knight. and I But I think I have to complete the development. Bishop e3 is stopping that pawn, but I think more natural place is b2, because it's stopping that pawn, but also it threatens to remove the defender at the f6. So this is what I'm going to do. Okay, knight goes to e4. Uh, this is a good place for the for the knight, of course. Now I can go knight d4. Maybe opponent will play knight e5 with that idea. Uh, so what can I do? Maybe I can bring my rook here, and later my knight can go to the c5 square. This is going to be a very good place for my knight. I will try to remove knight from the e4 square. It, that variation with d takes c5 and a3 that I recommend in the in the rock solid opening repertoire, this is one of the most annoying lines that I have faced when I'm playing the Tarash with, with black. Uh, this is the reason why I, I, I recommend it to that this is like a very very annoying for, for black. You can see that definitely we'll see what's gonna happen, but definitely white has got the advantage. Now I can go here. I have got strong attack. I can play b5. This is another move. I can play knight d4. So I think I have got that many good moves. Not sure which one should I choose. Let's start with this one maybe. Actually, okay, I will take it. It's a good idea for me to exchange minor pieces because I'm fighting against the isolator pawn. And now let's go back with my rook, but maybe I can go back here so I can later go there. Of course, I see that there is a tactical motive. There is a tactical motive here. 
Okay. So what? Knight d4, knight takes. Now I don't want to lose material. And you, okay, you can see bishop is back as well to that annoying diagonal. So maybe I will play e3 move. e3 move, it's stopping, the purpose is to stop that pawn at the at the d4. At the same time, uh, it's, it's stopping that bishop. And I think I will go rook d2 in the next move. Because my target is that isolated pawn at the d5 square. Okay, bishop g4. Opponent is trying to pin it. But if I'm not wrong, opponent is no longer protecting that pawn. So I think I can go there. I think it's too... Okay, and opponent has to go back. So, so probably wasn't the best, uh, the best maneuver. So let's play knight d4. Again, I follow those two principles that I mentioned. Probably three times so far. I'm blocking that pawn and trying to exchange minor pieces. Also, my bishop was open in this position. Okay. And now what are my options? I have to calculate different things. If I capture here, pawn takes, that pawn is well defended. If I capture here, pawn takes, pawn is well defended. So this is probably not the best thing that I can do, but maybe knight e2. I move my knight back. I have got three pieces pointing towards that pawn at the d5. And if I need to bring another piece, I can always play uh, I can always play knight to f4. Okay, so I play knight e2. You can see that pawn at the d5 is under attack. I would like to capture that with the bishop. Okay, now the question is, should I take it? Or should I play knight f4? Because those are two available options. Let's calculate the most obvious one. So takes, rook takes, queen takes. And I think I'm up a pawn. I think there's nothing wrong about it. And let's also consider knight f4. Will opponent play d4? <coughs> because I think that I still win material after I play knight to the uh, f4. But if opponent plays d4, I will take it with the pawn and push my pawn forward. But uh, I can keep that bishop because, you know, when there is such a castle, I would rather keep it. So maybe I can take and I can capture with the bishop at the d5. I think it doesn't give my opponent any chance to get the counterplay. Let's try with knight f4. There is no rush. What, what's the saying? Haste makes waste. So let's try to not to rush that much. What opponent is going to do with that pawn? Pawns hanging. Also, it's not so easy to play because I do not see any counterplay for black. So it's not so easy to play if there is no counterplay. What black can do? D4, I will take it and I will go D5 myself. Opponent can do what? Can play a waiting move, but it doesn't bring that much. A5, I play B5. Knight E5 doesn't work because my bishop's here. So, as you can see, this is a very annoying plan for black. Okay, what black is going to do here? d5, d5 is hanging. Okay, now, okay, rook d7. I told you that opponent can wait. Okay, now, of course, I see I can get it. Okay, now I have to calculate. I can capture with a... Okay, because let's, let's, let's just do it in a proper way. 
So one candidate move, second candidate move, third, third candidate move. Let's quickly calculate. Takes, takes, bishop takes. Uh, probably rook goes to d8. I play e4. I'm good. I have got the advantage. Okay, let's calculate. Second option, bishop takes. Uh, I, in case bishop takes, knight takes, and I have got a discovered attack, so opponent cannot do that. Opponent most likely will play rook d8, trying to pin it. Opponent is, this is a tricky move, more tricky than I thought. Uh, and now I cannot capture, I have to play e4. And bishop is, uh, it's protected, okay. It's nothing bad happens. But I like knight takes d5 more, and if I capture here, pawn takes and pawn is protected. So, okay, so out of three options, this is the option that I like the most. And this is the proper way, this is the way you're supposed to calculate. In case bishop captures, I consider the bishop takes, but maybe it would be better to capture with the rook, as there is such a principle, you're up exchange. So I'm up a pawn, I would like to exchange it. You can also see that I have got two very powerful bishops. Okay, rook captures. Exchange or not exchange? Let's exchange. Okay, and now maybe I can move my queen somewhere. Let's say queen c2. I put some pressure over that knight, but also I have got an idea to bring my rook into the d file. I don't want to, you know, I didn't want to move to b3 because rook could go to d2 and there are also some potential problems. I see, I see that there is queen c3, so maybe opponent cannot do it directly. But I want to avoid those potential problems. Okay, so now opponent is trying to create a problem here. So there is an X-ray, there is a tactical motive, I have to react somehow. And what can I do? I can play Queen C3. It threatens a checkmate, but maybe I will leave that threat for the future. Uh, what else can I do? I can just move my Queen away somewhere. Or now Queen to B3. And later I still want to bring my rook to the d1. I can take it, but I don't want to do that because you can see that uh, opposite color bishops, which sometimes it's drawish. So let's bring my rook. Knight is here. If I go there, opponent will take it. I take opposite color bishops. I don't need opposite color bishops, so let's play here. If I want to exchange that bishop, I mean, I would rather exchange Dasker bishops. Because there is like a potential idea for a draw for my opponent, so yeah, let's just go here. Bishop is superior to the knight in such a position. So I can go there, I can play bishop d5. Bishop d5 looks very tempting. Bishop f1 looks good. But bishop f1 leads into knight e5. Problem here. a4, a6. I don't want to exchange pawns. The less pawns, the bigger chance to uh, get a draw by my opponent. So I play bishop d5. Probably knight will go to e5. <coughs> After this move, what can I do? Yeah, maybe just I'll play something safe. I go there. Later, maybe I can bring my king. I can play e4. And I can play something like rook c1, trying to exchange. Yeah, should I bring my king or not? Just to, it prevents knight f3. Okay, I have got two minutes, 30 seconds. It would be nice to speed up a little bit. Uh, okay. If I play e4, my queen is protecting that square as well. But maybe h3 also would be good. It stops any moves like knight g4. And I think that opponent cannot remove my bishop from the d5 square if I play e4. What opponent is trying to do? 
I probably wanted to enter. So this move is blocking that. F3, either H3. F3 opens my king. I don't want to do that. I think I can just go H3. Rook is protected. Oh, queen goes to E2. Okay. <laughs> I have to admit that looks scary. That looks pretty scary. Yeah. Okay. And opponent would like to bring the rook here. Okay, so probably it was not the greatest idea to go there. Opponent will get a counterplay here. So what can I do? Rook C2 is coming. Let's play maybe a safe move. Yeah, I definitely should be more careful. Because opponent got the counterplay that I wanted to avoid. Maybe F3. Maybe F3 wasn't that bad. Okay, what am I going to play after this move? After rook c2? Do I have to wait? I think there is no direct... Okay, knight d3. Where knight is going? I have to, I have to exchange queens. Without queens, I'm not afraid anymore about this position, but... As long as queens are on the board, it's pretty scary. Okay, rook c2. I definitely have to trade it off. Okay, and now would be nice to go there, but that pawn is here. So if I go here, pawn takes, I go there, rook goes to d2, takes, takes, I bring that rook, opponent goes a3, cannot do that. If I go there, opponent captures, here, okay. Let's just activate my king. Okay, I have got to 1 minute 14 seconds. This is probably what opponent is trying is up to. Uh, okay, and now can I go here or not? Can I trap that knight or not? Let's move my king here. And I can always go to the b4 square. Okay, I think if I will just defend sooner or later, you know, only, only I can make a mistake. I have to get uh, some counterplay. I need to create some problems, so I will try to get the pass pawn. In case opponent checks me, I will capture the b5. <coughs> okay, opponent goes there. Let's take it. Rook takes g3. Yeah, let's go for the attack. I have got the pass pawn that I have to promote. Or this is another idea that is also pretty nice. <clears throat> and I takes here. Okay, 39 seconds. Yeah, it looks like I have to protect that pawn. Okay, I will try to do something with the e-pawn here. What can I do with that? I can try to promote it. Opponent is trying to promote that pawn as well. Who promote first? Okay, now I have to capture those pawns. Okay, I will offer a draw here. Okay, my opponent rejects a draw.
Okay, I offered a draw when my opponent had got three seconds, opponent rejected. Okay. Uh, anyway, so I have to say that I made a mistake here in this game because I gave my opponent for the counterplay. But um, yeah, okay, but I think it was pretty interesting game, especially especially beginning, I think was pretty pretty uh pretty good from a strategical point of view but you see this is what happens of course time was also important here but this is what happens when you um when you give your opponent a chance for the counterplay okay let's play let's play another game okay i will play another 10 minutes yes let's try to find someone for 10 minutes uh, yeah, about the rook and the bishop. I think that, you know, it happens from time to time at the top level. And usually the side who has got rook and the bishop is winning. Because it's not so easy, it's not so easy to, to defend against it. I mean, I'm not sure, can I, can I of course do that, but yeah. Okay, I have got the opponent from Poland, or my compatriot. Uh, okay, let's play Taras. I told you in the previous game, I told you three times that I usually play Taras, so let's go and let's play Taras here. So I just played Taras with, against the Taras with white, now I'm going to play Taras with black here. Okay, knight c6, okay, I played g3, so this is exactly the same story as before, I play bishop here. Okay, and I captured. Opponent plays b3, and I told you that if you, I hope you remember that I told you that there is such a possibility. There are some tricks, but it's not that good if black knows it. So I will try to not to fall into any of those tricks. There is one trick when white sacrifices a piece, but I think, okay. There is, by the way, a very famous game, I think, Seiravan against Kasparov. Uh, Seiravan played that b3 variation but yeah okay of course I'm just moving my knight to e4 I'm trying to put pressure this is a very annoying uh, this is the variation black plays bishop g4 and now white I believe plays knight a4 and this is the trick and I cannot go b5 because knight captures c5 knight takes and rook goes to c1 that's the, that's the trick Okay, so opponent follows that. And now in case opponent plays knight a4, okay, opponent doesn't maybe know that one. So opponent goes there, but I, I'm not afraid of this move. Knight a4 would have been much, much stronger, as I told you before. So now I have to do something with that bishop. First thing, let's calculate what happens if I capture. I capture here, knight takes... I will take it, takes, take at e3, bishop takes, queen takes, but I think it leads into a decent position. I think I can just take it. d4 pawn is under a big pressure. Yeah, so I think that h3 variation wasn't that fantastic here. Okay, knight takes, I will of course take it. Bishop has to take it, I take. I take it here. Ah, oh, by the way, I think I have got in between check at the f2. I mean, if I capture, rook takes, I take. Now I don't want to play the position when my king is completely exposed like this. Let's just take it with a queen. Probably opponent will take it back. Okay, and now I have to, okay, but now take a look. Opponent has got bishop. That bishop is superior to the knight in the more open positions. That's that's true, but you also need to know that uh, that opponent has got weak king and those pawns, especially pawn at the e3 is not very strong. It's isolated pawn. So I have got two moves that I want to consider. After this move, probably queen will go to this place. But if I go here, queen goes to f3, protecting them both, I can bring my knight. And I can create some problem to that queen. So let's let's choose, I choose this one.
knight e5 looks very tempting. Queen f4. Okay, if I capture, I will fix the pawn structure for my opponent. So I don't want to do that. So if I don't want to do that, okay, I did. I have to admit I didn't see queen f4. Probably I have to go back here, but then bishop takes b7. Bishop takes b7. And there are some complications. So if I go queen e7, bishop takes b7, captures, queen captures. Yeah. Okay, let's let's go back, but I'm not convinced to that. Because my queen is overloaded. But opponent captures. I played this move because I'm hoping to get some counterattack here. This is the reason why I play this move. I mean some counterattack by playing um by playing what? Okay, queen f5 threatening the checkmate. Have to do something with this, so what maybe g6. I think I know that it makes dark squares weaker, but I'm not afraid of it that much. And now okay, opponent wants to exchange it. So maybe if I capture captures, uh what's then? Rook goes here, bishop captures. I enter with the rook, or maybe I can just put just play b6. No, I cannot play b6. Or maybe I can just go there. Captures, captures. I think queen has go no escape. Okay, let's play. Let's play it here. So bishop, white's bishop is better than my knight, but on the other hand. As you can see, uh, opponent has got weak pawn structure. This is why I think it's more or less equal. In this case, I will take it. Opponent takes. So now if I go here, bishop takes b7. I'm bringing my rook into the second rank or third rank. Looks promising, but is it is it enough? This is the question. Alternative move is just simply rook e7. Yeah, maybe I'll just keep it simple. My knight at e5 is very, very strong. Now I, know I would like to bring my rook. Okay, bishop at the d5. If I remember two games ago, I had got a very similar piece at the d5. Okay, rook goes into the open file. I want to play b6. Opponent has got the light square bishop. So, as the principle says, I would like to keep the, my pawns on the dark squares. So opponent has got no access. Uh, so what? Rook c3. I'm try I will try to use dark squares also in the attack. That rook is guarding everything here. Okay, let's move my king first. I would just slowly try to improve the position. Rook c7, maybe f6, but pawn at f7 actually it's restricting that bishop. At the same time, it's protecting the knight. So now I have to admit I feel pretty comfortable. When queens are gone, it was a good idea for me to exchange queens. Because black, it's much better for black to play without queens. Not sure can I win this, but okay, so what are my ideas? Maybe I don't need to move my rook here. Maybe I can just maneuver my knight. But of course I have to pay attention because opponent will try to pin me. Okay, rook d2. I mean, maybe I can just maneuver my knight like this. I, I cannot do this because bishop takes f7. And I will, you know, small tactics, opponent will make a, some kind of a discovered attack. Uh, so what else can I do? My knight is pretty good here. Maybe I will try to do something with the rook. Maybe I can try to, you know, my rook infiltrates. Maybe I can try to bring another rook into the game. Opponent would like... Okay, rook goes there. Let's play it here. 
opponent also would like to enter on the d file, but that bishop has got no good place to move. And I take it. I also think it was a good idea for me to exchange that rook. Okay, maybe the next step. So I have to activate the king, but maybe a good idea would be also to bring my king closer. At least to e7, I think. I could also choose that path, but I think it's more or less the same. Because this is the end game, so I have to keep my king in the middle. Protecting f6. Okay, g5. So opponent is trying to fix my pawns on the on those squares. So what should I play f6 or not? That's the question. Let's let's play it. I think it's better for me to play it. King protects it. G5 is not possible. In case opponent goes there. I think I can just simply play it here. Knight protects pawn at the g6. And let's enter with my rook. I have to admit that I really like such a position where I cannot lose. I mean, you can see that it's not so easy for me to lose this position. Uh, okay, so let's play here. I'm fixing those pawns. Opponent has got no access to this one, so not at the moment. I mean, it's very hard to lose for black. It's still possible, but it's 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 pretty hard. I think that if I will not make any significant mistake, I'm I'm fine. I think opponent cannot play here because I will trap the bishop. If peace has got hasn't got that many squares, tactics you know you you, you can trap it. Okay, now maybe I don't need the knight anymore here. And I will move it into the square that it's attacking something. Because I was using that knight at the e5 to block that isolated pawn, but also to uh, protect f7 pawn. Now we exchange some pieces. I think I can just maneuver my knight into a more active place. And the square c5, c5 also is some kind of the outpost. And that square, uh, okay, bishop f7, opponent's trying to be tricky. I'm attacking to weaknesses, so this is why I think it's good. Opponent is trying to do some tricks. I can go back. One option. If I capture, rook captures, a king e6, king goes there, rook goes b7, probably this is not that good. My knight is more powerful than the bishop. I can go g5. And I think like there I can follow my plan. This is one possibility. I don't want to probably give, sacrifice that that pawn. So let's play g5. And now bishop has got zero access to my pawns. Also, I have to be careful uh, I mean, I have to play it in a way, so I cannot give my opponent any counterplay. This is extremely important. My king controls those squares. Rook can go to that, that place, but it doesn't give my opponent that much, I think. Okay, and after this move, what? Maybe I can just play it here. My rook attacks b3 together with the knight. Okay, now, now I'm pretty sure this is what opponent is, is trying to do trying to push it forward. If I go here, if I bring my king, would that be good or not? Rook d5, I will take it. Yeah, I think it was, it was, I'm also happy that I brought my king to that place. I, you know, when my king is in the center, it's, it's, it's very active. It has to be good for me. 
Okay, bishop d5, you see opponent is afraid of, of my king coming closer. So what, king e5 or rook c3? I think both options. Maybe not to rook, because opponent will go there attacking that pawn. Let's just first bring my rook to the c3. I have to play rook c3 anyway, so if you are hesitating which move should you play first, always play the move that you have to play anyway. And now I don't have to play it here, because rook f5 might be annoying, but I can just simply go back. The good question is, what should I do after rook f3? If I take king takes king d6 here, would it be win or not? By the way, isn't it Zugzwang? <laughs> if I go into if we go into such a position, because bishop has to stay there, king cannot move as well because my king enters. Ah, okay, opponent goes there. So opponent is planning to get some counterplay. I mean, I don't have that much choice. Have to take it. So what happens now? I can go there, I can go here. Bishop is under attack, but later this is, I think, you know, not sure what to do. I think, but I think it's better to bring my king into the center. And even if opponent goes here, I think, should I take it or not? I can take it. Okay, bishop goes there. But I, I also, because opponent is planning to go there and try to capture those pawns. I can capture that even with the rook here, here, captures, but I think more dangerous for my opponent will be to push it forward. And king goes to e5. I want to make that pass pawn extremely dangerous. Opponent takes, I will capture here. Knight protects it. Opponent captures. I can always take it at the a4. Should I take it or not? Yeah, I think I can just do that. Should I take it or should I maybe push it forward? Or if I go here, here. would be nice to check the king somehow. I mean, I can try to set up some kind of like a checkmates, checkmates net, uh, but okay. Okay, you know what, let's, let's keep it simple, let's just capture that. I would expect this move. Probably bishop will go there, but then I can check. Okay, and now I have to move my knight somewhere. Can I go here? And I'm activating my king. That was the idea. After rook here, king goes there, and you can see there is a checkmate threat because my knight supports. I think opponent didn't see that. I can just checkmate the opponent in this position. So yeah, <laughs> okay. As you can see, it was, it was, uh, yeah, I have to say that uh, I got a equal position right after the opening and from the long, long, uh, and yeah, I, I mean, I got equal position after the opening, after we exchanged queens, we got into the end game and it was like a very technical end game. There were also some tactics present, as you can see, but it wasn't that, uh, that tactical. Right? But even in the most strategical positions, tactics uh, still happens and you have to pay attention. So you, as you can see today, I try to show you how can you use tactics. I think except of one game we had got, there was only one more tactical game. We had got a lot of strategical games, but also in such a positions you can, in such a games you can, uh, you need to follow, you need to monitor tactics, you need to monitor blunders, of course, all the time. So this is very important. And let me just remind you that you can visit, probably you can see at the bottom, you can see uh, websites that you can get some 
free content that I created for you. But especially I would like to recommend you today that website stopmakingblunders.madbobula.com and you can get a completely free, completely for free a workbook. And here you can see table of contents that I'm just explaining most important uh, in the workbook. I'm ex I mean, in the whole series, I'm explaining most important things that will help you to stop making blunders. And in that workbook, you can find a lot of exercises that will help you to, to make blunder check better. You, you, will, you will train some basic tactics. You will start to recognize tactical motives. You will learn what is the proper way of the calculation and several other things with seven exercises that will help you to overcome that problem. Thank you very much for watching uh, and hope to see you next time. Goodbye.